Today's episode is sponsored by The Optimist. The Optimist is an incredible fashion boutique uh, where the creators, David and Joey, who are buddies of mine, they've drawn on the global network of best-in-class independent designers, and they go and they curate the best shirts, the best pants, the best jackets, shoes, accessories. So incredible. I get a lot of my stuff there. It's like you're shopping in someone's living room, very chill, but all the best stuff, hand-selected, curated, so you don't have to go travel around the world to find this stuff. You can go to their flagship store at Culver City at the platform, which is 8820 Washington Boulevard. They also have a pop-up store for December and January in Beverly Hills at 352 North Beverly Drive. That's 352 North Beverly Drive. Stores are open all day long. Go say hello. Say I sent you. It's an incredible place to shop. And you can always find them at theoptimistla.com. Welcome back to The Deal with Danny Brown. Today's guest is Puna Mahajer. She's a CEO, entrepreneur, investor, thought leader. She's done it all. She's currently the CEO and co-founder of Tokidoki, which debuted in 2005, uh, and it's got a cult-like global following for its larger-than-life characters and eye-popping aesthetic, and they've done a lot of iconic brand collaborations with Hello Kitty and Carl Lagerfield and the Sports Sack and Sephora and Marvel, on and on and on. She was also the co-founder of Hard Candy with her sister Dina uh, that they sold to LVMH, back in 1999, so she had an uh, exit there with Hard Candy, which was a very sort of revolutionary color cosmetics nail polish brand, uh, and she was also uh, the CEO and co-founder of Creative, Band and Creative Branding and Design, so she's done a ton. You can always find her at Tokidoki Brand on Instagram or www.tokidokiit at Puna Mohajer at Instagram, and you can find her creative partner at Simone Legano uh, on Instagram. So check it out. School's in session. Welcome, Puna Mahajar. How are you? Hi, Danny. How's it going? It's great. Good to see you virtually in your Tokidoki decorated office. How have you been? <laughs> I've been good. This is actually, um, it's our conference room makeshift showroom. So it's, well, it's, a, fun, it's a fun room. <laughs> uh, I, I hope you're enjoying your COVID Christmas break. I guess we're not going to uh, La Scala for the New Year's party. Darn. R ruined our plans. <laughs> Darn. Darn, what are we going to do? <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to be home like we've been the last nine months. So oh for those of you uh, that don't know, Poon, if we go way back, both personally and professionally, yes. I worked at a startup that you were an advisor and a counselor on, uh, Prime Light, where your ex-husband also founded. Um, but we'll and get largest, into and largest seed round investor. Largest seed round investor. So we have a profession. <laughs> we have a professional and personal history yeah. for over twenty years. Uh, there's some great stories here that we're going to get into about being entrepreneur and what it really takes. And you've been through it multiple times. You're a rock star entrepreneur, yeah. but you've seen the good, oh, the bad, you. the ugly, the realities of it. This isn't an Instagram. Uh, bullshit entrepreneur with a jet that's got money piled to stealing. This is the real deal. So I'm glad you're able to share here. But to give people some context, why don't you start with you founded Hard Candy, you and your sister, uh, yeah. at a really young age. So why don't you Very just young. dive into that for those that don't know Hard Candy. Give us sort of how that started okay. in the quick summary, and then we'll get into I'll your background. Your quick a quick summary of hard candy. Um, my sister was pre-med at USC. She was definitely d dialed in to becoming a doctor. I just uh, graduated from law school, so I was on my way to become yeah. an attorney. A and nice doctor and a nice lawyer. Right, shout out right. shout out to Dina. I hope she's well and safe. She's doing great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, yeah, she's amazing. She's an amazing talent. An amazing yes, talent. very talented. So, um, she actually came up with the product. She was going to a party and she wanted to, she's always been very fashionable, my sister. And she wanted to match her nails to her Dolce and, Dolce and Gabbana um, pastel colored strappy sandals. Nice. And she couldn't find the product anywhere. Uh, so she basically got a white polish and a dark, dark blue and hand mixed it so that she came up with the perfect matching color for her shoes. And it was a huge success at the party and all her friends <laughs> wanted her to start making them different colors. And this was the summer of 95. We were both in our twenties and, um, pre-Instagram, oh, yeah. <laughs> pre-Instagram, pre-internet, yeah, all this that. Is, this is pre-Instagram. This is, uh, 
old school, um, yeah. old school, a you know, getting AOL version <laughs> 2.0 or something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you have mail. Oh my goodness. So, um, basically, you know, I kept telling her we should start a business and she was doing different colors. This was summer of 95 pastels were really hot in fashion and everything was pastel green, purple, pink. Um, yeah, it was just, it was incredibly, um, fashionable at that time. So she was doing all these different colors for friends. And I kept saying, you know, you should start selling this. And we were shopping one afternoon at the Charles David, um, store at the Beverly center and the, and Dina had a different, my sister Dina had a different uh, color on each one of her toes oh my God. and the sales lady went crazy over her to the polish. Yeah. And she's like, Oh my God, where did you get that? And my sister, I looked at her and I'm like, are you ready? Let's start a business. And she was like, okay. So for the next five hours, I mean, we brainstormed, we each had notepads and we were trying to come up with the name and I can't take full credit. The name came out of my mouth, but we were collaborate. You know, we were brainstorming together on the name Hard Candy, which was perfect because yeah. um, her shoe, her toes looked like little hard candies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a, it was a great name. It was also, you know, it had other connotations, so it was a little bit irreverent. Um, and then we had some crazy fun with the names. Like one of my favorite colors was Trailer Trash. It was this um, silver metallic nice. color. <laughs> Yeah, it was really fun. So I, I'm going off on a tangent. And no, so that's that's the impetus of hard candy. And just to really, you know, fast forward the whole arc, we, we can get into it later. But hard candy, you ended up developing it into a global brand and selling right. it to. Uh, did you sell it to LVMH? We ended up selling it to Louis Vuitton, Moy Hennessy, and um, actually, the hard candy story is really interesting because. Um, well, part of part of our, I mean, we wouldn't have been able to succeed and do what we did without the support of my parents. You know, we're first generation born in the United States, my sister and 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 me, and um, you know, we immigrant parents. They immigrated to the United States. They're naturalized citizens. Um, they came to the U.S. in the early '60s. So I was oh, they born came in early. Okay, so they were they yeah, came early 60s, very way early. before the revolution the rev in yeah, Iran. Yeah. Shout so, out to your parents. Um, I love your parents. They're so sweet, uh, great people. Thank you. We're 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 very blessed to have amazing um, superheroes as parents, and they've been great role models for my sister and I in terms of instilling a strong work ethic and ambition. And well, why don't we get into that a little bit? You grew up. You grew up outside of Detroit in the suburbs. Yes, Grand Rapids. In, Where'd you guys uh, grow up? Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Bloomfield Hills, of course. <laughs> Bloomfield, beautiful Bloomfield Hills. So you guys grow, your parents were there. How did they get to Bloomfield? Why don't we start with that? Well, my dad ended up um, getting a residency um, Got it. When, in Med Michigan. Okay. Yeah, so he did a residency there and um, then just ended up, you know, he had some friends and contacts there and so they ended up in Michigan. So you were born and raised Midwest. Midwest, Field yeah. Held. And where'd you wh give us so your hard work? Work ethic was instilled early. Your dad was a young doctor. My dad is, a, yeah, he's um, he's a surgeon, physician, um, cervical cytologist, specialist. He was a professor of medicine. He actually had an outpatient surgical facility. He's a medical device inventor um, in Michigan for twenty five plus years that my Got mother it. managed. Got it. So he's and an entrepreneur too. <laughs> <laughs> very entrepreneurial themselves, our parents. Yeah. So I think both of us kind of get that from them. Got yeah. It. And then he was a professor of medicine for 20 years here at UCLA Torrance and pioneered a lot of different um, procedures in surgery. Um, uh, he was pioneered um, cancer detection with fluorescent sodium. Now they're using it in all kinds of cancer detection across the board. That was one of the things he wow. helped pioneer while he was there. Yeah, he's really, he's a genius. And yeah, I didn't even, I don't think I even knew this about your dad. I knew he was a doctor <laughs> yeah. and a surgeon for years. I didn't know he was also an entrepreneur and invented yes. stuff. So, so you and grew up. Actually, actually, Danny, we're, um, he's licensed a, a, a few of his devices, and we're currently working on a device and looking for licensing opportunities um, that he just got the patent issued here in the United States. 
and it's exciting. So we're looking to license that or joint venture with a company. I'm working on that on the side with him. Well, yep. that's awesome. <laughs> my so sister's he, helping too. <laughs> another another family business. Let's get them. Oh let's get the, get the girls working. So you guys grew up in an entrepreneur home, but also immigrant home where work ethic, discipline, starting you know starting from the bottom and building your own thing was it clearly was instilled at a young age. Now, how did you guys? How did you get from growing up in Michigan to ending up on the West Coast in L.A.? Was that from college or remind well, me? I'll tell you why. Um, my parents, you know, we had visited when I was growing up, we had family that lived in California and we had visited California, Los Angeles specifically a few times. And um, I knew that my parents wanted to end up retiring in, in Southern California. So when it came to, you know, decide which law school I wanted to go to, that was um, that really informed my decision because I, I could have gone to school in Michigan. I was accepted to school in in Michigan and I decided to come to California because I knew once I you know started making those relationships in law school I would get invested and um, you know you make those strong relationships when you're in graduate school and so I came out first then my sister came out then my parents came out eventually. Got it. So where were you at UCLA or where did you go? To no school? I went to um, I went to undergrad at Vanderbilt University in oh, Nashville, Tennessee. Tennessee. Nashville. Yeah. And then I, <laughs> I went to um, law school in San Diego, California Western School of Law. Southwestern. Vandy has a premier college baseball program. I know you don't give a shit about that, but that means a lot to me. They are like the Notre Dame of, of ba college baseball. They're unbelievable. By the way, um, you know, what, what's Walker, for, uh, Walker Bueller from the Dodgers? was played at Vandy. Anyway, nice. just a side nice. random note that means nice. nothing. But oh, for those but baseball then, fans. You know, Tokidoki, we, we've been collaborating with MLB. We actually nice. have the um, Dodgers uh, collaboration with the Dodgers, one of our vinyl collectibles. Oh, God, I got to get that. Edition. I've got to get that for you before yeah, we sell my out. Boys and kid, my kids are nuts about it. So, all right, so you were in law school. You were in the West Coast. You started Hard Candy because Dina had some nice colors on her toes. And you guys no. decided, you decided, let's make a business out of it. Yeah. Now, now you've started an, another company years later, Toki Doki. But can we can we rewind back to Hard Candy and kind of take us through the pivotal moments, the crazy stories? I mean, I remember you guys were mixing colors in bathtubs in your apartment. My I mean, this is was. True... My sister was mixing the colors in her apartment, in her bathroom. Um, and then her boyfriend at the time ended up becoming our, our third partner in the business. And so um, we were all young and kind of, you know, we were really learning on, on the fly. And it was just happenstance that um, her uh, boyfriend at the time had some friends that one had moved to Tokyo and another one had just moved to London. So inadvertently, we replicated what we were doing in Los Angeles the same model, which was selling nail polish as a fashion accessory in an unconventional avenue of distribution. Nail enamel had never really been sold as a fashion accessory yes. in high-end clothing boutiques. So it really, it, it just took off like wildfire. wildfire. I mean, it All was- right, so, so this is a really- I'm trying to manage point. a fucking Bronco, literally. It was so just really- This crazy. is a really, let me stop you right there. So you guys are young entrepreneurs with very limited- you know, entrepreneur experience at the time, and you guys created an angle that didn't exist, this distribution model of putting, not only was the product, which you'll get into, very unique, it, you took an old product that's been around and reinvented it with colors. Now everyone says, well, yeah, of course, fun, fun names, yeah. branded, but you also, the distribution behind it, where were you guys selling? Talk to us about okay. it. So my sister was working part-time with Sharon Siegel and ah, um, Siegel. Siegel store in Santa Monica. And when, you know, I said to her, ask Sharon if you can just put these bottles um, on consignment and see if they move. And a, a lady came in with her 17 year old daughter. And this was when we only had one color, which was always the most popular color, which was the um, pastel blue color with the original blue. color. And uh, we called it sky. And, um, her mother, she insisted that her mother buy her all three bottles. There was only three bottles. We didn't even have the name on it at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Or the rings. And, and um, 
yeah. So she bought all three bottles for 18. I think it was $18 a bottle. And at that point in time, Chanel was the most expensive nail and in the marketplace and was selling at $16 a bottle at that time. Wow. So you and set so that the was bar crazy. higher. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but we ended up, I mean, we came down in the price eventually, but, um, Sharon said to my sister, you know, I, I'd like you to, I, I'd like to place a PO for 200 bottles, <laughs> you know, so hence the hand mixing with my sister's boyfriend and his brother was helping him. And it was just crazy. It was crazy. It was, it's a wild story. So Fred Siegel was the first big order, like, whoa, we gotta, was, we gotta do, we gotta get going here. We gotta launch this thing. Yeah. It was actually Sharon Siegel's store Sharon in, Siegel. in the Fred Siegel um, compound over yes. in Santa Monica. In Santa Monica on fifth, fifth street and Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, your real estate. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also know Fred Siegel. I mean, I got yeah. a lot of merchandise there through the years, through the decades, yeah. although not, not so much recently, but anyway, so that's where it started. Now, can you walk me through some other pivotal pivotal moments. I mean, at some point you had to go from an, uh, mixing in mixing colors and um, in a bathtub to, okay, now we're running a real business and I'm sure it did happen overnight. Yeah. My mother helped us with that, it, putting in systems and, um, you know, it was, it, it was very difficult and it, and it was a rough, it was a rough ride. You know, I, I remember at one point, my sister and I had a pillow and a blanket. We were sleeping on the floor of our offices. We were basically wow. passing it back and forth to each other. Yeah. Just trying to get, get, it, get things done. <laughs> um, and we had a lot of challenges. You know, we went through three CEOs. And um, at one point, the product was showing up where we were not selling it. Got it. And so we had to go and um, get our claim our product because it was somehow disappearing through the back door. Got and it, got it. I know there wasn't, you know, we, it was, we now learned how, a lot. How, how many years did lessons. it, how hard many years, so you 95 ish is kind of the start, but how many years before your, this sort of thing happened where you even had to hire a CEO? How many years did it take? What, how long did it take to, to build it to that um, point? We started in 95. I believe we brought the first CEO on. I mean, we only had the brand for four years. So, um, so we brought him on in, I think the first one was in 90, end of 96, maybe mid 96. Got it. So you yeah. ran it for about a year, scrambling on your own, bootstrapping yeah. it, and then brought in the CEO. So it was a very quick startup to exit. It was, fast. It was yeah. fast. It was really so, fast. So that sounds like a pretty crazy story. Uh, product going out the back door and showing up places. So that is yes. a challenge. They do they tell you that at Harvard Business School? <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. We had to basically secure our inventory overnight. So, you know, I showed up with the marshal and our attorney at our third party fulfillment facility, and basically I told the owner, "We're not leaving until we have all of our property in our possession." And this is a funny story because we had um, an order, a huge order that was going out to Macy's and the can it had to ship on Monday and this was a Friday. Oh, so no. the, the um, marshal's there on Friday and you have a big order going out Monday. Yes. So <laughs> we timing. basically, um, it took us, I believe it was 12 hours and eight semi trucks to move all of our inventory from that facility to a makeshift facility that we secured 48 hours earlier um, in Van Nuys, a family owned business. It was a trucking business and they just had happened to have 10,000 square feet. And I was able to convince them to let us set up a makeshift distribution center there. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And then my mom ended up running it. God bless her. She did a great mom. job. Yeah. She She's was running so, the fulfillment I, center. Oh my God. She's, yeah, she's amazing. And she's she's a tough lady, but she's very sophisticated. I told her, you have to leave your jewelry at home. You got to be careful. So walk me through, if you can remember, how many, where were you being distributed at the peak? How many outlets, how many stores, how much product was being sold? Can Do you recall, you know, how big it, it, it ended up getting? Well, we had, I don't remember how many stores, but we were in, I think all Bloomingdale's, Neiman Marcus, Macy's. It's a long time ago. Um, 
And then we were in we were key department stores in Japan. I think we were in Takashimaya. Um, in London, we were in Harrods and Harvey Nichols and yeah. Oh boy, there was a so massive a long retail. Time ago. Yeah, there was we had some great distribution. And but we started out originally in smaller high-end boutiques. And the and the thing that really helped us um was we in the beginning, Elisa Silverstone, she came in and she purchased some product and she was on the David Letterman show and he taught, he talked about her polish and yeah. you know, that was really great. We put that in our press kit. Um, and then, you know, Cindy Crawford had a show called house of style and they yes, featured the that. product. MTV. And, was that MTV? Yeah. House of so. style. Or e, yeah. I, I remember yeah. house of style. Long time ago. <laughs> it just aged us. People that are watching are going to be like, what are they talking about? What is, what is MTV? <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about Toki Doki. Yeah, so <laughs> wait, before we get into Toki Doki, so what uh, you, you exited LVMH, what an incredible company to sell to, but uh, at what point did that become an option? Were you thinking of exiting or did they approach you? I mean, how did that, yeah, what was, um, how did that go down? They approached us, they approached us, but it was very, um, it was really, really challenging and super contentious and, um, you know, uh, it, it was, it was, uh, it was not, that part wasn't fun for that us. That wasn't fun. No, that wasn't and fun. The partnership um, with them was contentious. The acquisition process was, or all the above. The process were not aligned necessarily. Um, and, uh, so, um, I know you alluded to earlier talking about, it's just difficult to be in business with family because, um, and you know you keep, I don't know, keep, keep making the same mistake. I don't, I don't know if it's a mistake, but it definitely has its unique challenges. You know, because you're bringing another, and I've discussed this before. You're bringing another layer uh, of history and um, baggage, so to speak, to the relationship. Yes. So it's not you're having to contend with all of those issues while you're running a business together. It's just super challenging. It makes yeah. it that, that much more difficult. It's hard enough. Yes. It's hard enough so to run a the, business. So the challenges of being in, in business with relatives, especially someone you're so close with, like your sister, you're saying that just brings a whole nother layer of complications, complexities, personal baggage, emotional, psychological, a lifetime of stuff, plus the pressures, husband too. Husband. No, so. ex husband. Oh, I love <laughs> Ivan. Poor Ivan. Where's he's like, I gotta get him on next. So you guys you guys you guys go from a startup to blowing up pretty quick, thousands of retailers, uh incredible cre like recreating a whole new vertical in fashion and cosmetics and now this global brown buys you out. Uh, were you guys on, did you stay on? Was there a, like a non-compete you had to stay on or were you out? No, I, you're out? I, I, I got out completely, but my sister and um, her ex-boyfriend, they stayed on. for. A okay. Of time. So let's wrap up the hard candy there. You've done, <laughs> you've done a lot of other stuff. One of the things you've been working on for years uh, is Toki Doki, which is another incredible lifestyle brand, which you're going to get into because there's so many different avenues you uh, co-founded that with Ivan. Uh, Ivan has been a, a yes. close friend of mine for years. Your ex-husband yes. was your husband at the time. Yes. And Simone, who was the artist and creative uh, artist yes. behind it. Uh, can you talk to me? People, again, in this Instagram culture feel like, oh, yeah, if you go on Instagram, you say you're an entrepreneur and a CEO and you have a nice car. That's all <laughs> you need to do. Can you tell me, walk me through, what, how did you guys start Toki Doki? Because okay, Simone was, is Italian and he's living in Italy and he, yes. nobody knows who he is. Walk me through the beginning yeah. of how so, you guys started um, Toki Doki. After, after, um, after Hard Candy was sold, um, my that's how I met Ivan because we were one of the very first cosmetics companies to sell online and his previous company had Correct. taken us through that Which process. is where I met you. That was the startup, right. Crying Light, right. who was the commerce for fashion brands. So yes. you and I even met because you were one of his first clients. We were one of, yes. Got and it. it's funny because I, I, you know, I ended up, <clears throat> the 
CFO at that time from Smashbox had called me and um, it's just crazy blast from the past and to get a referral. And I had told them they did, you know, they did a great job for us. Yeah. And um, so uh, Smashbox became a client. Client number two. Audience. Yeah. <laughs> the factors. <laughs> and little did I know that I was referring my self business in the future. Yes. But fast yes. forward, um, Prime Light was, uh, um, Prime Light ended up going into bankruptcy, unfortunately. And after yeah, that was not they, fun. That wasn't fun. Um, after they had filed for bankruptcy, um, his clients needed help. So they were reaching out to Ivan. So we actually ended up resurrecting the business model together. Right. Um, in 2001, right before 9 11, that was insane. Right. It, what was that company called? I remember that. You, you're basically. It's called cre uh, Creative Branding and Design, DBA yeah. Dam Brand. So yeah, Dam Brand. Dam Brand. Dam That's Brand. Right. Um, That's right. So we started that together and, <clears throat> excuse me. So we had great, great clients. We had Smashbox. We had Oliver Peoples, Trina Turk. Um, we had some great lifestyle, <clears throat> lifestyle brands, Bizu right. Bizu before they yeah. licensed to JCPenney. And so we really, uh, you know, that wasn't my, that's not my forte. That was, that's Ivan, that was Ivan's forte. And so he had a concept to come up with a consumer product line in the men's specifically targeted for men. Yes. And um, so we were working on developing that together while we were running that company. And um, he stumbled upon tokidoki.it. He was outsourcing some design work. And that was Simone Leno's professional calling card. Simone had all of his art on there. And he had, at that time, Simone was one of the best flash animators in the world. He had developed games on Togidoki.it and it was, it was just phenomenal. He called me in, he's got, you got to come see this website. And I yeah. go into the office and I'm like, Oh my, literally I started to scream like a lunatic. I'm like, yeah. who is this guy? Oh my yeah, God. He's so talented. I mean, look behind you is just a, a piece of his. Simone is such an incredible. Talent. Incredible. I'm going to pick this up. I mean, this, this is, this right behind me is, um, collaboration we did with cartel. This is some of Simone's fine art collaboration with honest. Yeah, is... We've got Carl dolls Ooh, just, just... here. I don't know if, can you there see they are, them? the Carl dolls? I love those Carl dolls. <laughs> <laughs> We've got awesome. a lot going on in here. We've got cosmetics, plush, vinyl toy collectible, Bags, everything, Barbie. Toys. We've had wine there. You've had a ton of collaborations. Right. So at the time when you guys discover this website, it's his calling card, his art website. He doesn't have a global brand, but he's an incredible artist. Right. He, so, but he did have some, you know, he was, he was young. He was 26 when I met him. Um, he's now a father of two beautiful kids uh, living his dream. Uh, he's living in Tokyo, so he's 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 in Tokyo. Yes, he's, wow. he moved his family there in October. Um, oh my god! Before that, we were we were we share a condo, <laughs> we share a wall. We have a joining. Yes, I know, <laughs> I know, we I know. We live well. next to each other, and we're we're like family, all of us. Yes. Um, yeah, I, so I, I you like guys working with partners. It's nice to have a partner. It can get ten, it can you know contentious sometimes, but. I think it's hard work, you know, it's hard to, to run a company and I don't think I'd want to do it by myself. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, tell, before we get into the partnership of it, so you discover him, what, then what? You guys got on a plane well, in Italy or he we, got on a plane in LA? We started to stalk him and he, he had some unscrupulous people that he had been dealing with. Uh, um, and so he, he didn't get real of us. And then my ex-husband said, you know, um, well, my, my wife and her sister started hard candy and sold it to LV Major. Are you sure you don't want to come out? And he said, no, I'll come out. So we, he came out and met with us. And, um, you know, we, we all shared the same vision for this brand since the first day that we met. And it hasn't changed. And we've wow. just been growing it and building it and that having that you know it's trials and tribulations i can't believe this is our 15th 
Well, we're about to go into our 16th year in business. 16th so, year. Um, oh my God. We partnered in 2000. Yes. Of, of the, of the brand. We officially launched the brand in 2005. Yeah. I, I kind of, I'm having vivid recollections of your apartment on Beverly Glen and <laughs> Ivan showing me the website of Toki Doki and going, look at this design. And then you tell, and telling me the story that you just flew this guy out. So 15 years ago, you started, you stayed true to your brand. Um, the brand has so many tentacles. I mean, it's a core, it's a lifestyle brand, but just looking at what you just showed us, um, Tell us a little bit about some of the collaborations you you know that you're most proud of, or that you think we should know about, or collaborations oh boy, that are happening now. So many, I'm proud of so many of them. Um, I mean, the Carl Lagerfeld collaboration has been really a huge honor, being that Carl Lagerfeld, sure. the god of fashion. Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, you don't get any better than that. And. You know, uh, Barbie was a very iconic collaboration that we're particularly proud of. Um, we did a few Barbies through the years. And, um, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm spacing out now. Um, there's so many. Um, Marvel, that was fun. Uh, Lottery, recently we did a collaboration with Lottery, which is really cool. So you've got a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, it's just a lot. There's an amazing artist that I really like called Val Frey. And we did a, we did a capsule collection with Val Frey and um, Simone and Ilsa. She's they get along really well. They we've had a beautiful collaboration with them, and then we do a lot of our own pure Toki Doki branded product as well. So there's always something interesting going on. Yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. And Simone is also a fine artist. So we're, we're starting to um, push his fine art um, up and center a little bit more. Now I need too. to look at that. I'd like to buy some of that art. <laughs> so talk to me, let's dive more into partnerships and entrepreneurship. And Simone is a very different type of partner. So in this sense, you partnered with a, a total creative, someone who created uh, this artistic, these characters, right. and you guys came in with a vision well, and business and infrastructure. Yes. Talk to me but about... I have to, I have to tell you, Danny, Simone actually is a very astute businessman as well. I mean, I, I think he's he's exceptionally bright. I, I think both sides of his brain work. Obviously, one person can't do everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's talk yeah. to that because that's important in business. That's well, like, partnerships usually bring different talents and skill sets to the table and delegate to each other. Absolutely. One person can't do everything. So, um, I think it's, I think it's, you know, I, I like working with a partner because I like to share that responsibility. Um, and it's, it's, I guess it's a formula that I'm living again because that's the formula that worked with my sister. She was, she's exceptionally talented creatively and I was more on the business side of things. Um, and the, you know, the JD helped. I wish I had my MBA <laughs> yeah. learning that on the job. I learning suppose. it on you. Yeah. Yeah. You think you got more than an MBA over the last 25 years. <laughs> yeah. I think you oh, should be, boy. you should be, you should be teaching the, uh, the MBA at the school of Anderson, the school of Marshall. I, love at the that. I would love that. You should. Um, be. Yeah. So it's really great. And, uh, I'm, I feel super grateful that, you know, I'm in the position that I'm in right now. And I try to give back to the entrepreneurial community. I, I invest where I can. Um, you know, I'm a limited partner investor in Halogen Ventures, which is Jesse Cooper's right. fund. I don't know if you know Jesse. You'll yeah. have to meet her. Do you know her? I know who it is. I don't know. Oh, she's personally. great. So um, she's got two funds I've invested in. And uh, I just love supporting other entrepreneurs and, I like to, particularly women, I'm not, I like to support male entrepreneurs as well, but I feel like women really need a little bit more support. Um, it's important. Because there's it's very important. fewer of us in the ecosystem, and I'd like to see more and more females uh, succeed in, on the board level across you know, yeah, that's fantastic. Le <laughs> level, level the playing field, break the glass ceiling. I mean, it, it, I think it's really important, you know, for, for women to have. Uh, role models and someone that's done it, someone that can open doors and, and give advice and counsel. I mean, that's huge. You, you've been doing this, I want to say, you've been an entrepreneur 
at all different levels for 25 years. So I, I imagine you've learned some things along the way. Are there some key, so. <laughs> are there some key takeaways? Like what, what would you, what would you wish you knew then, you know, at 24, 25 that, you know, now? Well, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you one of the things that I wish that, um, you know, the one thing that my sister and I, we were very young when we started our biz, our first company. You were kids. <laughs> we were babies. Um, you know, we, we, people really consistently under, underestimated us and they, because we were young and I, I just, I, you know, I look back, I, one of the things that I would impart to people, and I'm sure people have said this over and over again, but you need to trust your gut because if something is not sitting well with your gut, there is a reason. So I think at a young age, um, no, we were very intuitive and we had, I, you know, we, people, a lot of people tried to take advantage and they didn't necessarily get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> we uncovered Good. it. We uncovered it. Um, and we we were able to, and even with Tokidoki, we were able to, uh, continue to succeed despite, you know, different obstacles, be it litigation. When you own your own intellectual property, you have an affirmative duty to protect your IP. So if someone's sitting on it, you really have to, you're forced to protect it or you lose your rights to it. So yeah. that's a tricky thing. And we had a massive litigation um, at Tokidoki that was almost derailed us and was very consuming, all consuming. I think would be in a much, which would be much farther along as a, as a company. But despite all that, and then the crash of 2008 yeah. was very stressful. Now we're dealing with a global pandemic, which right. another thing that has kind of, you know, another obstacle. There's always, there's always something. There's and, always obstacles. Um, I'm proud of us that we're continuing to stay alive and grow and succeed despite these particular obstacles. Um, so another thing that I would, I would, you know, I, I would tell people <clears throat> is just hang in there keep doing what you're doing. That's what my dad always says to me. Just keep pushing through. You'll yeah. get to the other side. The persistence. Don't the give up. The tenacity, the stick to itiveness. Tenacity. It's a very, it's There's a very always common threat. A solution. Right. There's always a solution. There's always a solution. There's actually multiple solutions. Just pick one. <laughs> pick one. Yeah, so I'm hearing a lot of different themes and threads that are very common with entrepreneurs that have succeeded, which is you know, the stick to itiveness and the tenacity, because there's so many obstacles that may seem unsurmountable obstacles. But if you have the mindset of there's a solution for everything, it may not be your first solution or your most ideal solution, but there's a, there's a ways to maneuver and pivot and you have to be nimble. And I'm also hearing that there are some devastating blows that you're going to get hit on the chin, punched in the mouth by Mike Tyson, and you have to get you have to get back up if you want to survive. It's not all IPOs and limousines and private jets. There's a lot of grit, grind, and blood, sweat, and tears. And I think that's part of what I wanted to to talk about today. I mean, you've you've sold companies and you've started companies, but there's been a lot of pain, turmoil. Uh, you know, in the in the process, as with almost all entrepreneurs, it's very rare when someone just creates something and it blows up and it's all easy and they cash out. I mean, that's rare. You know, that's. Can you speak to that yeah. a little bit? <laughs> um, you know, we've been approached through the years, uh, Toki Doki, but we really like what we're doing, and. We're of the mindset right now that we think that we can still continue to to add value. And and you never, you know, you just never know. You, you don't know. Should you take money? Should you not take money? Should you grow with your own money? Should you, you know, they're, they're, like I said, there's there's all these different ways. Yes. Um, you just better make sure that you're, I suppose, enjoying the process, at, at least some of it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because, um, Otherwise, why, why, you know, why, why do it? Why, why are you doing it? You've got to, you've got to have a reason that, that you, that you're committed and you're passionate about what you're doing. I mean, Simone yeah. and his artwork, it brings 
a lot of people tremendous amounts of joy and psychic relief and just, you know, beauty. And so being able to offer that to people is so um, rewarding. Yeah. We all need that. We, we need beauty. We need things that make us happy. We need to be able to look at a painting or a picture or, an, or a collectible and just hundred yeah. percent be so happy. It just, it makes us happy. So yeah, it resonates, you know, you have a certain art. That's the whole thing with art. You know, it moves us, it inspires us, it makes us feel things. It's, it's super important. So if you had a young entrepreneur, I know you give advice and counsel and you invest in startups, but what would advice be? It doesn't even need to be a young entrepreneur. It could be middle-aged entrepreneur. If someone's Absolutely. starting something and coming to you for, okay, I just started this thing, what is some advice you could give? And I know you, you can take this anywhere because there's so many different ways to go with that. But what oh are some gosh. basic things and basic advice you would tell someone that's just starting building whatever they're building, their brand, their company, whatever it is, their product? Um. Cash is king. <laughs> so you need some money. Watch your cash flow like a hawk. Uh, right? Yeah, um, I, this is brilliant. Cash is king. You know, um, another thing is I, you know, test your market. Test your market before you put everything into it. Test, test whatever it is. Sure. And, and make sure that it resonates with your targeted audience, whatever that audience may be. Yep. Test smart. it before you put everything into it. Don't go all in until you've tested. Yeah, test it and 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 make sure that um, you know, we've made a lot of mistakes and but it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. Just keep moving forward. Keep it's really learning. okay. You're going to make mistakes. We're still making mistakes. I mean, you can't succeed without failing. It's such a cliche, but it's true. It is true. So talk to me. You, you mentioned cash is king. So if you're an entrepreneur and you don't have your own cash, your own nest egg, but you have this product service, whatever it is, what are, what are some suggestions that you would give somebody to go get? Financed. Like what, what I would suggest. Do? I would suggest that they pitch pitch it to somebody. Pitch it. Pitch it. Friends pitch and family, it. strangers, all the above. All of the above. All of the above. Why not? I mean, most most entrepreneurs, you know, they'll start with a seed. They'll start with a loan or a seed round. Yeah. Um. Just and to how get many, themselves going. What would be typical if you're just starting up and nobody knows who you are? How many people are you going to be meeting with? pitching until someone goes, okay, I'll give you a few bucks. I mean, you're meeting with a hundred people. Or, I don't I know, know the answer to that. <laughs> if you were to guess, an educated guess, I imagine that the first person you talk to is not going to go, here's a check. Here you go. Do whatever you want. If you're an unknown entrepreneur, I imagine you got to meet with quite a few people. You could get lucky. And the first person says, I love it. Uh, but I imagine there's a lot of pitching and pivoting and, you know, sharpening the the spear so you get the pitch right and figure out what you're really asking for i don't know i don't i don't know i i wish i knew the answer to that question because i i haven't really experienced that yeah. um but i do want to I, I do want to shout out to my my girlfriend um my best friend from high school uh she Please. she, <laughs> she started a brand she birds and she um birds. i'm really proud of her you talked about people starting companies later in life and yeah. you know she's my contemporary and um uh she's she's doing as you know she's raising What's her, name? Through her Who, friends and family name? i've actually invested in her company her name is sheila atari and um all right really, sheila go for it girl i know i'm really she proud birds. of her i'm really proud of her and she's growing her brand through you know this pandemic we'll have to put it in the show notes you'll have to send me her links and things i will i will I have to get you get get some product for you. So, um, yeah, shebirds.com. Shebirds.com. So, tell me what is the what do you see the next couple of years coming up for Toki Doki? I know we're in a global pandemic, and it may be hard to see past lunchtime. <laughs> but what do you see coming up? What do you see for the brand? <laughs> and um, 
I see us expanding into uh, animation, which we're really excited about. We actually do have an animation partner right now that we developed um, a property with. Uh, we, you know, we have multiple sub brands inside of Tokidoki. We have these a slew of character families that have these cute, adorable backstories. Um, so I'm excited about you know continuing to push the envelope for Tokidoki and, and explore areas that we we haven't gotten into yet, like animation. Yeah, does uh, that mean animation for TV or digital? It for broadcast, yeah, it could yeah. be either, you know, any of the streaming digital. platforms per se, or there's 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 still old school broadcast, broadcasting as well. Yeah. There's podcasts, you can come on here and talk about it anytime. So <laughs> any other stories or words of wisdom you want to share with us? I know we've taken a lot of your time and we got to get you uh, headed out to your next meetings sure. or whatever your what your virtual <laughs> stuff. You can't meet with anybody. But anything else you can share with us, or you know, um, let me know. Just believe in yourself. Follow your passions. That's good. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Listen to your gut. These are all yeah. nuggets. Don't words listen of wisdom. to the don't listen to the naysayers. If they don't get it, they don't get it. It's okay. Don't don't worry about the haters. There's a lot of haters out there. That's for sure. Stay on your path. <laughs> well, look, it's awesome to sit down for uh, a few minutes with you. I miss you. Send my love to everybody. Hopefully, we'll be able to see each other. Well, it won't be at it won't be at La Scala since they got shut down. But <laughs> hopefully, in the next sixty days, ninety days, something. But uh, my kids love the characters. They love the Toki Doki oh, so stuff. Sweet. So we got to get the swag, we, some major swag coming their way. Well, we got to get this Dodger collab hooked up. They are so fired up about that. That is so awesome. So love you. Thank Good you, to Danny. see you. Take care. Thank you, Puno Mahajer, for breaking it down with us. It's always fun to spend time with her. Please follow us at the deal, the deal pod on Instagram or the deal Leave us a review if you like what you hear and a comment. We really appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, The Optimist. You can always go to their pop-up store in Beverly Hills or their flagship store in Culver City. I get all my gear there, guys. Go check it out. It's an awesome place. We'll see you next time. Thanks.